all right let's understand the architecture and the implementation of it uh, before we jump into the code and directly start getting our hands dirty it is extremely important to visualize uh, the entire process that we need to do in order to implement semantic search there are a couple of approaches i will suggest you and then i'll, I'll tell you which one to take so first uh, the first thing uh, so what i'm trying to say is i'm going to show you an auxiliary index approach and i'm also going to show you uh, uh, the other approaches that uh, you know you could use while building uh, similar search engines right so um, let's get started so the first thing uh, we will do is uh, first of all i want to write a title and um, this video would be long i'm going to go very slow and make sure i cover all the parts so please feel free to fast forward forward this if you if you just directly want to go to the code and then you know see that so the first thing that i'm going to write here is remember before building anything it's extremely important we start uh, our thought process on a canvas on on a white on a white canvas right which is exactly what i do Okay, I have my title here. Oops, it seems like uh, have a typo there. Okay, so we have that. So now the very first thing I'm gonna show you two approaches, as I said. The first approach is uh, uh, on the current index, right? So what you will do is the user uh, is gonna enter a text. So let's drop in the user guy. I use this software a lot. It's absolutely free. Uh, Draw.io. I use this, um, you know, a, a lot. As I said, so the user essentially would type, uh, a, essentially a query, right? Essentially, I am looking for something, uh, you know, uh, for example, I am looking for, let's say, uh, uh, software engineer jobs in New York. So, for example, we'll just write that. We'll write the number one here. Okay. We wanna go slow and we wanna do it the right way. Okay, this is what the user is typing. I'm looking for the word software engineer in New York with Python skills, right? Now, uh, what we want to do is, first of all, once we have this, we essentially want to have a NLP engine block, and I'll break the NLP engine block in 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 a, in a sec in, in a second. What that would do. So let's uh, essentially uh, put a pipeline here. Okay, this would be essentially uh, your API or you know Python Flask, whatever. You know, so this is gonna go to the NLP engine block. Now, what is this NLP engine block? Please allow me to explain uh, in a second. So let's join this guy right here. Let's make this a little bit perfect. Okay, so we'll have this NLP engine block and the arrow, okay. What is this NLP engine block gonna do? Well, the job of NLP engine block is gonna do following things. Uh, and I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll essentially or it's fine we could essentially make this in this this way right here okay so the nlp engine block will have a couple of models that would essentially uh, do uh, the stuff the first uh, the first pipeline it would essentially is it would take the entire string and the job is to remove stop words right so we'll say remove upwards okay so this is my uh, first engine that's gonna essentially remove stopwards right so after going through my first engine this is gonna go through the second pipeline which would be essentially extract king keywords um, actually uh, that's fine uh, we can implement that later on so this would ex essentially extract keywords right now the second block and nlp engine block what it's going to do is this entire vector so so this is our sbot pre-trained model model uh, this would be also this is going to go uh, simultaneously in a thread pool process so both of them we are going to do it together okay so we'll uh, Okay, 
So we have an S bot pre-trained model uh, that's gonna, you know, essentially take the string, and this is gonna essentially after this part, it's gonna convert this into vector, into n-dimensional vectors. Now we need to go through a flattening block, which means the the vector needs to be flattened. flatten out the vector okay and we will try to connect this block as well okay so now this is great now what we need to do is uh, essentially these keywords we have some keywords and we have essentially a vector of this entire um, you know whatever the user is searching for right so we convert those into vectors right now what what's gonna happen after this part is we have the keywords we have the flattened vectors um, we also essentially um, for now, we could, you know, for now, let's leave that to keywords and I'll, I'll show you uh, in a second what to do. Now uh, comes the query generator block. So uh, this NLP engine block is done. So uh, what we could do is uh, at this point, you so essentially this guy right here will return JSON of keywords and essentially it's going to return you the vector, uh, the vector, flatten vector for the, uh, for the, for the given query, right? Uh, we still have one more block, NLP block here uh, that I'm going to show you. This is gonna be a spacey uh, NL, uh, uh, spacey block, Sp spacey engine, I would say. Now, what this spacey engine is gonna do is uh, essentially the job for is to essentially given keywords, it has to perform an entity recognition. So, for example, um, from from here, it would say that the word New York. Sorry for that. So now it would tell me that the word New York is a location. So now I have a solid field and its value. So the NLP engine will, the spacey engine will essentially recognize, um, is there any recognized keywords from this, okay? Now the final output is essentially, uh, uh, would be delivered as JSON, J JSON block. Um, essentially, uh, we'll scroll a little bit towards this side. Okay, uh, so the final output here would be essentially, uh, you will essentially have a vector, what the user typed, right? Then you will have um, keywords, then you will have entity recognition. So whatever location, you know, uh, this would recognize all that, right? So this is our uh, main NLP engine block, okay? So we will put this entire into, um, we'll try to make this block a little smaller, a little bit here. This is our uh, essentially a black box that the user will, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this is our black box, okay? So we'll essentially put this into a box, you know? So this is a black box, essentially the user types in, it performs all these um, computation and what it has to do is essentially, after that it's gonna output a JSON, right? Now comes the very interesting part about this uh, engine. So now we essentially would have one more microservice. And uh, so this microservice will take essentially uh, these items, right, from the block number one. So let's put, um, let's put this here and let's just define this as block one. Okay, and we will try to increase the size. Okay, this is my block one, okay. So my block one would perform my, uh, computation on, on, on that, right? Now my block two is a very smart block. All it has to do, it takes the, uh, you know, we could pipeline our Docker containers as well to make this um, our workflows. So my, this block is essentially gonna take keywords, right? It's gonna take the vector and then it's gonna take the entity. Now, this will essentially go through an Elasticsearch query generator. So the, 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 this microservice is responsible for taking the entity and generating uh, a beautiful, amazing, uh, what you call that, um, Elasticsearch query. So we will say query block. So now, as you can see, so my query generator, uh, you know, it's gonna generate the query uh, at this point. So essentially the vector, it's gonna perform a vector matching on, on Elasticsearch at search at, at search time. So Elasticsearch is capable of performing vector matches, um, you know, on a petabyte scale data set. Um, so that's that. Then what we would do is essentially uh, the keywords, we would try to search the, those as a match word in the search, should section, which means, hey, give me most similar item uh, in from the database, right? 
where you have keywords in the entire job post, the keys are matching. So that, then that's that. And the entity recognition, so if you found an entity, for example, location, put the entity recognition into the filter section. So now you're, you have a amazing, amazing search engine, right? So now this is gonna essentially query your elastic search. Uh, as I said, we still not done yet. Uh, so um, uh, I'm gonna show you more. So let me, uh, this is my approach one, as I said. So this is gonna be a database. And uh, we will essentially write here, Elasticsearch, okay? See, when you wanna develop a complicated search engines, right? It, it's not that straightforward, right? So, I mean, you have several pipelines associated there, right? So now my this block is gonna query Elasticsearch, right? And it's gonna return the data, right? So um, we'll say, we'll connect this block here, okay? And this is gonna be my block two, right? So the, what it has to do is essentially, it has to go to the data, uh, it has to go to the data store, it has to take the previous block information and then uh, essentially query the data. Okay, so this will essentially return data. So my block one essentially returns me uh, an NLP engine. My block two essentially returns the appropriate record. Now we have to go through a ranking system, right? So when we get the documents, right, we'll get like, let's say hundred. Now, how do I know which one comes first, which one comes next, right? So what we will do is we'll perform a TF-IDF uh, ranking. So, uh, you know, we could have several um, ways here based on what sort of data. If you have clicked data, right, you could say the job posting that has the highest number of click, put it up, right? So this would go through a ranker system and I'll just put this as a, as a, as a black box. Ranker system. And once that is done, so once all the pipeline is complete, we can essentially return the data back to the user. So I will put this as this way. And uh, hopefully I cannot connect because the block diagram is pretty big at this point. Okay, so at this point we return the data back to the user. So we have several blocks, right? Uh, it goes through several chains and, and then it returns the appropriate result to the user. So this approach is really great. Now, the only downside of this approach is uh, the data that you have, you have to convert those into vectors, right? So now the downside of this, if you wanna change the model, and if the model is emitting, let's say a different vector of shape, well, you need to re-ingest all the data. So this, this, mod, this approach is good, but it's fast, as I said, it's fast, but the only downside is if you're if you're trying to experiment with different different model and if you have, let's say 400 gig gigabytes of data, well, if you change it, you screwed up, right? Because now you gotta re-ingest all the data with the new vectors, which is why I, I usually like the approach for the auxiliary index. The auxiliary index approach says that, you know, and I'll, as I said, it, it would be the similar approach. So now what we do in that is essentially, instead of having the vector on the same index, we create a new vector, right? We create a new index with the vector, right? And what we do is we say, okay, first of all, you know, it would go through this um, NLP engine block, right? It would do all that. Now instead, and when the, when the query is generated, right? Now it's gonna query the vector index, right? Okay, it's gonna say, it's like creating a relation, right? So, and I'll, I'll try to put it in a notepad, maybe, uh, and let me show you. So let's say you have an ML index now, which just has vector and the, uh, the, which has like a vector. Let's say, I'm gonna show you a, a sample. So uh, the ID is one, then it has a vector field, whatever that is, okay. Uh, we'll draw that by dot, 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 dot. So now what you're doing is guys, you're querying this index and you're getting all the ID. So now this index will return ID one, two, three, four, whatever that returns, right? Now you're saying that, hey, after once I get ID, now I'm gonna query my original index with these ID. Give me all the documents with the ID one, two, three, four, right? So now you're gonna get that, then you can put it to the ranker system and then you can develop that. That's the concept of auxiliary approach. Well, the advantage of this approach is, well, if you change your model tomorrow, uh, you can simply create a new index with a new, new 
embedding, word embedding. That way, essentially, your original data, you don't have to keep changing or messing up stuff. You can easily keep switching your auxiliary index, right? And keep creating aliases that way, right? And keep improving your search uh, based on different, different models and hyperparameters. So um, I usually prefer the, the second approach, but the problem with the second approach is now the speed, right? Now you're querying essentially one index, grabbing their document ID, the primary ID, then you're querying the main data source, which has all these documents. Works great. I mean, if you're using Elasticsearch, it would be pretty small, like a millisecond or a second. It doesn't really matter, but I prefer usually the second approach because in the first approach, if I had to change the embedding, uh, I, I gotta re-ingest all my data, which is a, a, which is a problem. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed uh, an overview of how to develop a semantic search with Elasticsearch, right? How, how you can develop uh, multiple engine blocks. What I would show you next is essentially a small demo of the code. And again, as I said, I will try to go slow. I try to explain you every single thing over there as well. You know, hey, this is that, this is this, this is that. But uh, we could conclude this as a part two and the part three, we can go a little bit in the code. Part one was introduction, part two was the overview idea, right? So now uh, with that being said, I just wanna show you one small thing and I might open up my paint. So, so what happens guys is, you know, and please bear with me my drawings. So let's say you have all these. So what you did is you converted all these job posting into vectors, right? So now when the user, right, they says, hey, I'm looking for this, you convert this into a vector and then you say, okay, this vector is essentially here, right? Now you grab the nearest new, nearest value. So you know, these are the similar items, right? Then you pass it through a ranker system and this is how exactly everything works. I hope you have enjoyed this part too, right? Now the part three is the code where we will jump a little bit into code and understand that as well, okay?